Hey, what's going on, YouTube? It is the Dual Threat Podcast here, your daily news source for all things sports. Thank y'all for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Comment any differing opinions you have about our New Year's Six college football predictions for this year. You may notice my hoodie. It is pretty comfy. I must say we've got the, the Dual Threat merch here. Uh, <laughs> got it as a Christmas gift. You know, just had to show it off for, for the fans out there. Let's get straight into it, Jacob. Uh, we've got the Cotton Bowl coming up in a few hours. Who do you got in that game? Oh, I just want to kick this video off by sending a quick shout out to Caleb Maris. Um, we haven't posted a video in a couple weeks, and he just commented today. Hope you guys figure things out. We see you next season or do more sports. IDK. Hey, if you want to see us do more sports, leave a comment. Tell us what sports you want us to do. Um, but now getting into the video. Oklahoma, Florida, Cotton Bowl Classic. It's a little bit of a weird game. Florida's like entire team pretty much opted out except for Kyle Trask. So it's going to be interesting. I still think um, Oklahoma, they have been doing great recently. I still don't think too highly of their defense. Um, but that being said, like I said, Florida's a lot of their receivers are out. I think it's going to be a better game than if Pitts and Kadarius Tony and uh, Grimes were all playing so I still think I'm going to take Florida I think Kyle Trask is better than just how good his receivers are but I do think it's going to be a fairly close game and I could really see it going either way yeah I agree I mean we, we looked at the the line earlier this week before all the opt-outs it was Florida minus four now it's Oklahoma minus seven and a half that's obviously a dramatic change uh a drastic change excuse me and that that's not really like like common for the cotton bowl you know this is a huge bowl game that's sort of the trend where it's going in college football now is college football player or college football playoff or opt out it's kind of sad to see that but that's kind of where the direction is going but back to the game i i do think florida is taking a massive hit i do understand that oklahoma is going to have their tight end out their running back out um but the, the thing is, those aren't their main players when it comes to the offense. Obviously, Kyle Pitts is the number one player on Florida's offense. I think that's pretty obvious. He's the best tight end in the country. And if it weren't for Devontae Smith, I'd say he'd be the best non-quarterback player in college football. And so that that is a way bigger dig than losing your tight end that you throw to three or four times a game. Obviously, Kyle, I mean, Kyle Pitts is the number one player um, catcher for Kyle Trask and so you look at their numbers they only have 10 career receptions as as a total for the remaining Florida wide receiver class for this upcoming game most of them coming from that backup tight end when Kyle Pitts was out so here's my thing and I think it's going to be great to see in this game is Kyle Trask better than his receivers as you said We've seen what Kyle Trask can do with Kyle Pitts. It's kind of like the Manziel, Mike Evans sort of scenario. Manziel was a good player, but Mike Evans really did a lot of the work for Manziel. And it's going to be interesting to see if that's sort of the same scenario here. And also, I, I know a lot of Oklahoma players point out Florida versus LSU and say they lost to them. Like, But the thing is, that, that was an outlier game. Um, I think they were obviously focused on the Alabama game the next week, which, by the way, Florida played amazing in. They they gave up Alabama's definitely uh, their their best run for their money this year. And so I think the Florida team that played in the Alabama game is going to show up for this game. And so that's why I'm taking Florida as well to upset Oklahoma, even with all those backups. Um, so next up on our list for bowl games, we've got Flor – or sorry – Georgia versus Cincinnati. This is actually a really interesting game. One of the ones I'm looking forward to. Uh, I believe Georgia is favored by a touchdown. This is probably, in my opinion, the best G5 to Power 5 matchup we've had. Uh, Auburn versus U UCF a few years ago. It's kind of hard to say UCF was the better team. Auburn had a lot of opt-outs. Um, last year, LSU versus UCF, or sorry, two years ago. 
uh, I think it was pretty obvious LSU outmatched UCF. I mean, they did go, that same team went on to win the national championship the next year. I think this year, both teams have motivation. Cincinnati is going to prove to the whole universe that the G5 can, you know, deal with the power five and Georgia with their new offense with uh, JT Daniels and how they've, uh, sort of improved this year going through the season. I think this is going to be a really good game. I think, th like I said, this is the best Power 5 to G5 matchup we've had. And But I, I got to take Georgia in this one just because of the talent on their team. I mean, Georgia recruits, um, you know, just top 5, top 10 every year. And I, I really see Georgia as a physical advantage against the Cincinnati team. And even though this really is a Cinderella story for Cincinnati – I see it coming to an end against Georgia. What, what about you, Jacob? Yeah, I this one I was actually kind of going back and forth between because I wasn't quite sure. Like, it feels like Georgia's the better team, but at the same time, like, Cincinnati's been playing great. I'm going to stick with you. I'm going to take Georgia as well. I think Cincinnati's a good team, but maybe if this were earlier in the, the bowl slate, I would have taken Cincinnati. But after seeing what – um, the Coastal Carolina game, I just don't know if I can trust a, a group of five team like – because it felt like everybody was trusting BYU, and then they lose. And then everybody was trusting Coastal Carolina, and then they lose. And so it feels like everybody's trusting Cincinnati right now, but I don't know if they're that team. And I think Georgia is playing great right now with JT Daniels. So uh, I'm going to stick with you, stick with Georgia. But I do think that, like you said, is going to be a very, very good game. Um, so moving on to uh, the Saturday, January 2nd games, we're going to go to Oregon at – well, at – Oregon versus Iowa State. Um, this one is interesting because Oregon, it doesn't seem like has been good at all this season, but they won the Pac-12, so, like, they're, that's why they're in this game. But should they really be – that's a different story for a different time. But I'm taking Iowa State here. Iowa State – got down big against Oklahoma, brought it back, looked good in the second half, looked like they could have won that game. It, or, I, I, don't, I don't know. Brock Purdy has been playing great for Iowa State really this entire season, got him up to rank six before losing to Oklahoma. I just don't trust Oregon. I mean, they lost to Oregon State and Cal. It's like it, – the Pac-12 is weird this year. I, I think the Pac-12 – it feels like a group of five team this year is this Oregon situation. So I'm going to go with Iowa State. Um, what about you, Drew? Yeah, so looking at Oregon in that, that Pac-12 championship, I mean, the thing is Oregon was plus two on the turnover margin and one by seven. You look at Iowa State in the Big 12 championship, they were minus three in the turnover margin, and they still only lost by – was a yard I mean if, if he just got one more yard in I think it would have been a tied game or something like that and that's the thing Iowa State made a lot of mistakes against Oklahoma that I don't think they're going to make against this Oregon team and I, I just all I just think all around Iowa State is a better team I think Matt is a, an amazing coach I love how he cares so much about his players and so I'm taking Iowa State in this game for what is probably Iowa State's best season and their um in their program history and I think they top it off with a win in the Outback Bowl and so that that I'm going to stick with you as well. I'm going to go with Iowa State in that one. Uh next up we've got the Fiesta Bowl. Uh we've got Texas A&M versus North Carolina. For me, I mean, I don't want to say I feel like Texas A&M was disrespected. I, I understand about them not getting in the playoffs, but I really don't understand how they're not playing Oklahoma later today. I think Texas A&M cared more a lot about that game. I think five versus six is a better matchup than six versus seven. I feel like that's pretty obvious. Texas A&M beat Florida. They should get the better bowl. Anyways, this game is actually a pretty good matchup though, but I, I've still got Texas A&M. They're favored by a touchdown. The thing about North Carolina is the way they, they ran the ball against Miami was just tremendous. I believe they had 500 rushing yards, which is just absolutely insane. And so the thing is, you're not going to get that against Texas A&M. Their defensive line is really good. Really, both sides of the ball, their, uh, their offensive line and defensive line are some of the best in the country. And so North Carolina is going to need to be able to throw the ball 
way more than they have this this year. Sam Howell, you saw what they did against Notre Dame. When Notre Dame shut down their run game, they really had a hard time putting the ball in, in the wide receiver's hands because they're really that that split offense. You know, they got to be able to run and pass at any time. But if you stop the run, then it's really hard for them to just be able to live on the uh, the throw. And I can't see Sam Howell and that North Carolina offense doing that. And although Mac Jones pretty much owns the Aggies, I think the Aggies with Jimbo Fisher is a different story. And so I've got a and winning this one. I mean, I, I, think, I think you hit it right on the head. Uh, one thing I will disagree with you is you said you're not going to say that the Aggies got disrespected by being in this bowl. I 100% think they got disrespected by not getting put in the Cotton Bowl. They, yeah, they got a New Year's Six Bowl. It makes no sense why they would put Florida against Oklahoma, especially when Florida's whole team's opting out, like, if a and were playing in that bowl, it would be probably pretty even on the line instead of Oklahoma winning or favored by nine points or eight and a half or whatever ESPN has it at. Um, but, yeah, I, I, like you said, I'm taking A&M in this game. Uh, you pretty much nailed everything that I was going to say. They are allowed 92 rush yards a game, which is similar to Notre Dame is their, the strong point of their defense is their, uh, their run defense. And you look at – you look at the AM game against Bama, the one that everybody holds against them. They gave up like dirt. Bama's leading rusher was like 60 yards in that game or something. And they took away the run and Mac Jones beat him in the air. And just like you said, when North Carolina played uh, Notre Dame, they took away the run, couldn't beat him in the air. And I think something similar is going to happen this game. So I like AM. Uh, I like them fairly, probably pretty decent win. I, I, I can't see UNC putting up a huge fight. I mean, I could see it being within like 14, but probably probably double digits if you had to ask me. Um, all right, so next game that we're going to go to is we're going to take it to, to the playoff. We're going to go to the Rose Bowl, the relocated Rose Bowl in Arlington, Texas, and we are going to Notre Dame versus Alabama. Speaking of AM getting disrespected, but we'll save that for another day. Notre Dame, I cannot imagine, is going to do anything different than what they did versus Clemson in the ACC championship. Uh, I think it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, Notre Dame got beat by 24, and then the committee said, all right, we're going to put you up against Alabama, who in our eyes is better than the team you just lost by 24 to because they're one, Clemson's two. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but it's all for money in the end. And I think Ian Book is going to have more time to prepare. And I think I think Clemson's D-line and Bama's are pretty comparable. Clemson might have the edge there, and you could see it. Ian Book was under duress every single play. So I think if as long as Bama can put that, that much pressure like Clemson was doing on Ian Book, I can't imagine it's less than a 20-point game. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, the line is 21, so obviously Las Vegas agrees with you. I, I Like you said, I don't understand what Notre Dame's going to do different against Alabama. I mean, against, yeah, Alabama than what they did with Clemson. I think Alabama has – this is probably the best offensive team. Um, I mean, LSU's was pretty good, but this one is just – it's fantastic. I think if Alabama had the defense – that they've usually had this would probably be the best team in college football history they have three heisman finalists in the top five notre dame just got beat by one in the top five by 30 points i mean you could talk about the garbage time touchdowns i'm not really gonna you know include those but now you got to play against three of the best players in the country and so I don't see Notre Dame stopping them. We saw what Trevor Lawrence and that offense could do against Notre Dame. They, uh, Trevor Lawrence ran for a touchdown for about 40 yards. And Mac Jones is not going to be able to do as well on the ground as, as Trevor Lawrence can do. But I can guarantee you Najee Harris is going to be able to fill that spot in and run whenever he wants to. Najee Harris is one of the best running backs in the country. And so I don't see how Notre Dame is going to be able to stop the run game and the deep ball game, because what Alabama is going to do to you is they'll probably run the ball one or two times, get four or five yards, 
and then they're going to throw a ball to Devontae Smith, who's burned your secondaries and scores an 80-yard touchdown. And I don't see Notre Dame being able to stop that. They couldn't against Clemson. I don't see how they could do it against number one Alabama, who has been able to do that all year. The thing that people are going to point to is Florida versus Alabama. Florida kept it close. Florida's a three-loss team. That's really the the thing I've been hearing all year. But in reality, Florida's offense is second or third best in the country. Notre Dame is not even in that conversation. They're okay at everything. They're not great on offense. Florida is an elite offense that can score at will whenever they want to on a big-time play. Notre Dame is not like that. Alabama is like that. They are the best at that in the country, and I think that's going to show. I've got Alabama covering the spread. Next up, we've got the Sugar Bowl, um, Clemson versus Ohio State. This game, it, I'm really going back and forth on this game. I... I like Clemson in this matchup, but my problem is Ohio State has not played their best ball this year, and I think that's pretty obvious with their close games against these pretty pretty good teams. I mean, Indiana, Northwestern, they're not the best teams, but Ohio State still beats them, but they're not beating them as Alabama beat number five in the country, and so that's kind of where I'm sitting at. Ohio State hasn't played their best game yet. Justin Fields has been laying an egg against their two best opponents this year. I mean, with a combined, I think, five interceptions and like two or three touchdowns. And if Justin Fields is going to show up like that, Clemson's going to win worse than what they beat Notre Dame by last week. And that that's really just the reality of it. But if Justin Fields shows up and their running back who ran for 350 yards against Northwestern shows up, I think Ohio State stands a chance. But... I don't see Clemson losing this game, really. So, I mean, Trevor Lawrence, it's hard to bet against him, especially when he's favored. So I've, I've got Trevor Lawrence and uh, the Clemson Tigers, and that leads me to Alabama and Clemson in the championship. What about you, Jacob? Yeah, like you said, I think this one's interesting because, like everybody's saying, I think Ohio State's getting a lot of some necessary and some unnecessary uh, flack for how they've been playing this season. I think it's hard when for not a whole lot of fault of your own, you're getting games canceled and you're only able to play five games. Uh, but it's been the season of rule changes and not only rule changes to get them in the, the, cha- the Big Ten championship, but also uh, their COVID rule changes where the Big Ten changed their 21-day policy to 17. And in reality, I think that just makes this game even more competitive because their second uh, their second leading receiver, um, I, I'm going to butcher his last name, Olave or Olav or however you say it, uh, Chris, he's a beast. And him and Garrett Wilson are really good. And, yes, Justin Fields hasn't been great in a lot of these games. But in reality, he was great in the first half of that Indiana game. And – the second half, right, he threw three interceptions. He was bad. But I think we've seen Justin Fields in, in previous years. We know what he's capable of. And if he's healthy, he has time to prepare, and his team is healthy, I think it'll be a better game than people are giving Ohio State credit for. I think a lot of people are counting them out like they're counting out Notre Dame. And I don't know if I think that's fair. Another thing that I think Ohio State has is – very good deep defensive backs and there's a, a lot of debate in recent years whether texas is dbu or lsu is dbu uh, i think at least in the past like three two or three years i would give it to ohio state because the talent that they've put out and the talent that's gone to the nfl and played well and been good transitioning from college players to nfl players i would give it to ohio state and they're defensive backs are still very good this year. So if they can somehow keep a hold of the the Clemson receiver core, because I I would argue their receivers aren't super great, and Trevor Lawrence kind of makes them look a little better than they actually are. But I think Armani, Amari, Amari Rogers is okay. Cornell Powell's okay. I've seen them play bad in a lot of big situations. And they showed up against Notre Dame, the big games. And so if they show up against Ohio State, 
I can't see a world where Clemson doesn't win. But I think if they have a bad game, Powell drops a few balls because he's done that all season. But, yeah, I just think if Ohio State's DBs can step up and force these Clemson receivers to drop balls and stuff that they've been struggling with in a game in and game out every, all year, uh, I, think, I think they have a chance to win. I, I mean, Ohio State rushes for 276 yards a game. And Clemson's run defense gives up only 99.8. So, like, it's going to be – I think it's going to be a great game. I think it might be a little more low scoring than people are expecting. But I still see Clemson coming up – coming out on top maybe like uh, like 31-24, 31-27, something like that. I can see it being fairly close. Uh, so, I agree. I That leads me to Clemson, Alabama. And something that you brought up, Florida played close with Bama because their offense played well. And I think Clemson's going to do the same thing in the Natty. But we'll have to wait till these bowl games go through to see if if these shape up as we think. But, uh, yeah, I think I think we're on the same page for every game. So Yeah, so real quick, Alabama versus Clemson, who do you got? I got Bama. I, I, think, I think you look at it, Clemson has a better defense than Bama – I'm sorry, than Florida. But I, I – I personally don't think their offense is as good as Florida. That might sound crazy to a lot of people. I think they have a better run game, but I personally think their receivers uh, just just play worse with Trevor Lawrence for some reason than Kyle Pitts and uh, Tony and all those other Florida guys do with Kyle Trask. And I also think it's an SEC championship game. It's going to be close. I think Clemson – uh, I think Clemson loses to Bama. I, yeah, I, I mean, I think it could be close, but I think I think Bama wins. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Alabama beats Clemson. I don't think Alabama is unbeatable, but I do think they're going to go undefeated, if that makes sense. I, I mean, I can easily see Alabama losing to Clemson in the championship and would not be surprised. I would be surprised if Notre Dame does beat Alabama. I don't really see that game being close. So there y'all have it. We only picked one upset for the New Year's Six Bowls, which is, you know, historically that's not very uh, smart, but, you know, we're with the favorites this year, so that's good. Um, Florida was a favorite to begin with, but now they're not, but we're still picking that upset anyways. Thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button as well. Comment any differing opinions you have. Who do you got in these bowl games? Who do you got winning the championship? And... You know, who do you got winning the Heisman? I think we both have Devontae Smith at this current moment. And so, you know, just leave those in the comments. Thank you all for tuning in and have a great day.